Well, Brad, you go to bed last night after the final game of the postseason as head coach of the Boston Celtics. You wake up this morning as president of basketball operations. I would imagine this has been a whirlwind for you. How would you summarize this process um, from start to finish of when this first came to you as an opportunity to today being announced as a new president of basketball operations? Um, well, I've known for, you know, almost a couple weeks now. Um, so it probably came a couple weeks before that, uh, at least discussions started. Um, but that's been, that's the, the excitement and being invigorated by a new challenge is also balanced by the fact that, you know, you have a job to do uh, and um, you have a team that you're responsible to and a staff that you're responsible to. So I think the, um, you know, obviously very excited, but also cognizant of the fact that, you know, a lot of lives are affected when change happens. And so it's a, you know, it's, a, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we're doing all we can for all of those people. Yeah, it is a lot of change. I'm curious, coach, when did you, uh, I keep calling you coach. Call me Brad. Am I allowed to do yeah. that? I got to call you Brad now. Yeah, just call uh, me Brad. Brad, when did you let your players know and how did that conversation unfold? Well, we, we actually have our Zoom meeting or our exit meetings over Zoom. So uh, I've seen a few of them here today. I've texted with a few others. Um, I'll call a few more later. Um, but uh, so my, my exit meetings that are scheduled over Zoom are actually usually um, tomorrow and Friday. Mm -hmm. So, you, so those, are, those are when I'll make sure that I touch base with everybody that I haven't already talked to. How difficult is that to have that over Zoom, that conversation, as opposed to in person with these guys that you've spent yeah. so much time around? If they're if they're in Boston, we'll have it in person. Okay. Um, and if they've moved elsewhere after some of their testing this morning, then we'll do it over Zoom. But it's more about their own, you know, journeys, the year they had, um, and how you know we can help them get better. Well, as we know, you're now filling this position that's vacated by. Danny Ainge, who's retiring, congratulations to both of you on, on both of your new positions, him in life. And he was just talking to Amanda Flugrad about how much golf he now gets to play. But you guys have known each other so well since 2013 when he first approached you to become head coach of the Boston Celtics. Uh, just, just summarize kind of, kind of what you've learned from him and what your relationship has been like and how it has grown over this time. Well, it's just been great from day one. Um, he's an empowering boss. Mm -hmm. Like he gives you a lot of freedom. Um, he wants you to learn, grow, make mistakes, get better, um, and do so all with passion and with a drive towards winning at the highest level. And, um, his balance of perspective and drive is really impressive. Um, he has a way about him that makes you think, that he's kind of got, you know, an all shucks demeanor and nothing is really bothering him or weighing on him. And yet, you know, when I decided to move into this role, um, I realized all the things that he's thinking about all of the time, right? And so um, I have an even greater appreciation for him now um, than I did before, but he's just a terrific boss to work for and super empowering. That's the word that keeps coming to mind. Well, then that might play into my next question, but what, what do you want to take from what you learned from him and kind of plug that into you now filling this role in terms of what you want to accomplish and how you want to run things in this position? Well, I want everybody to be as passionate about the Celtics and relentless in their work as he is. Um, and obviously that would, that'll start with me. And, um, you know, I really like our players. I really like our team. I like the people that are here in the building. And, you know, but we also know that we have to improve and we have to get better. And so I think of anything, I would take that kind of relentless focus, that measured thoughtfulness, um, the idea that he would empower others consistently, um, not only if you're the head coach or, you know, whatever role you're playing on the team. Uh, and then I think that the last part of that is, but you have to balance that with being yourself. Right. And so you've got to, you know, I, I want to be all those things. And at the same time, you know, everybody's personality is a little bit differently and they get there a little bit differently. Well, Brad, over your course uh, of your eight years here as head coach at this point, you've said many times that your job was to coach the team. Danny's job was to put the team together. Now you're stepping into that different role of putting 
the team together. And it's a little bit more cutthroat from that perspective of having to make some really tough decisions. Why did you want to uh, step into this position that does require um, those types of moves and decisions that affect a lot of people? Yeah, I think even as a coach, one of the things you learn is every decision affects a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's so hard not to play somebody as the 13th or 14th player because the difference between them getting that opportunity and not you know, may set them back in their careers. And we know what that can mean financially. So you take every one of those decisions with a great deal of thought, uh, probably more so than the players ever realize, right? And I think that um, here, you know, and, and at the same time, you know, your ultimate responsibility is to the organization and the organization having success. So you have to have a great deal of care for the people you're working with we are ultimately judged on whether we win or not. And so that is a true, real thing and a real balance. But um, so I think there's some similarities in that regard. It's, it's, it's never going to be easy to move on um, from somebody that you've grown attached to. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's part of the difficulty. I think that coaching does present areas where, you have to have difficult conversations and you have to have difficult, you know, one-on-one -on -one moments all the time. And so I think that's great prep for, you know, this next stage. And the first major decision that you're going to need to make is finding your successor as head coach of the team. As you go into this process of searching for the next head coach of the Boston Celtics, what are the characteristics that you're looking for in the next person that's going to be roaming the sidelines and leading this group? I mean, there are a lot of characteristics that I'd be looking for, but I think, you know, generally a great representative of the Celtics, mm -hmm. um, a person that is going to work tirelessly and relentlessly on being the very best that they can be, and a person that really cares uh, about players, staff, and the people in the building. I think that, you know, having that, that demanding presence that demands excellence, but that warmth that can bring out the best in people is really important. And I'm looking forward to diving into this um, and, and figuring out what's best, what's next. Um, you know, and, and it's gonna be, you know, I, I know this, that person's got some easy shoes to fill and I've got much tougher. No way, coach, no way, no way. Not easy shoes to fill. You've been an incredible head coach for the team and now we're excited to have you in this new role. But coach, one last question before I let you go. Um, in being the coach of this team for so long, obviously you have the most intimate knowledge of the players on this roster. As you look forward to the next step after you do hire a head coach and the draft comes and free agency and trade season comes, what do you think this team needs um, to be able to reach that next level and break through to the NBA finals and pursue that 18th championship? Well, I think it's a few, you know, I think we've got some, some things to do. There's no question about it. Um, you know, I, I think we, I said this last night, you know, we were in the mix in a few of the last few years, right? And um, now I think that we recognize we have to get better, you know, and, and like I said earlier, you can do that any number of ways. I think you always start with the focus on the development of the people in your building. Um, because, you know, they're here and they're Celtics. And, you know, a lot of those people have done a lot of great things here. Uh, and then you also have to address the reality of adding through, you know, drafts and trades and um, opportunities and free agency and the such. So there's a lot to do. Um, there are some challenges that will come um, with some, you know, with any potential move because you always need somebody to, else to agree to it. And, um, you know, every team is in their own unique situation with regard to dollars and everything else. So we have, uh, we have quite a challenge ahead. We're looking forward to the challenge and I'm excited to be a part of it. And all of us who work for the team, who are fans of the team, we're all excited to have you in this position, Brad. Uh, we, we've seen how you lead these players on a daily basis for the last eight years that you've been here as a head coach. And now we're very much looking forward to how you're going to lead this organization as president of basketball operations. One last time, congratulations. And try to take a breather and, and spend some time with your family before you dive into this. Yeah. I, the one thing I know I've got to do is take a nap. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running on fumes. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Brad, Brad, I thought I was going to be able to take a nap today.
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. right. Coach, congratulations well, again. Thank you.